Hello everyone, I am Miri, CEO and founder of Supernova, and in this video I will teach you how you can build the exporter basically from scratch. Now this is very impromptu video, I think there will be a lot of experimenting and I hope we can by the end of the video get to something usable. But overall the main purpose of this video is to give you not only high level overview of what the exporters are and what they can do, but also a deep dive. So if you are interested in actually building some sophisticated exporter, you will know how to do that and, been, and you will know all the tips and tricks that make this much easier. I would like to start with a few things as a reminder at the beginning, we'll be using VS code for developing the exporter and we will also uh, be using some things that you need to have installed. So the basics like NPM, Node, uh, and also Supernova VS Code extension should all be installed in your system. There is a documentation page that gives you a list. So uh, before you develop a new exporter, please do those things and then you can follow this video. Additionally, for those who maybe don't know what exporters are, I would like to explain first. So exporters, you can think about them as uh, like very simple NPM packages. They actually are uh, sort of NPM packages now with the, the new developer experience. You will see that there is a webpack and there is package JSON, all the cool stuff that you would expect. But there is also something extra uh, on top of that. And I will explain you everything about the anatomy of the exporter uh, later in this video. Now the exporter packages basically serve a single purpose to export the code or some other things like artifacts uh, of your design system to your code bases or other destinations. The easiest exporter that you can imagine would be a CSS exporter, right? So we take colors and we convert them into say hex values that are just named properly. Now, of course, the exporters are much more sophisticated. So one of the exporters that we have released um, actually today when I'm recording the video is SVG to React code. So it takes all the icons that you have in your design system library and it converts it into a code automatically. And then using something that we call pipelines, you can basically use that exporter automatically trigger it based on some events that are happening in your design system. And then you can route that output to say your repository as a pull request on GitHub, Azure Bitbucket or GitLab. Or you can deliver it as a webhook if you want something uh, more custom. Maybe you have some very secure solution that doesn't uh, allow you to uh, give us access to your repository. So there are also workarounds around this this way. But generally, you can think about exporters as small packages. They take your design system data, they convert them into a production code. Now, Supernova ships with a lot of uh, packages, with a lot of exporters. There is an exporter for CSS, uh, for uh, Tailwind, for Android, for iOS. Just, I would say, a pretty hefty offering from the beginning. But in many cases, what happens is that you want your own exporter, right? You have something unique, you have a unique setup of your code base. And maybe the default output for whatever platform we have just doesn't fit your requirements. For those reasons, we also ship with the ability to either modify the existing exporters or build completely new exporters. Now this guide is focused on walking you through all the steps of creating the exporter. But if you will be modifying existing exporter, the experience will be easier. You will not have to worry to create everything from scratch. You will just take existing exporter, fork or clone the existing exporter and then make a modifications to it, commit it back to Supernova and you will be able to use that, that modified exporter. With this video, we will really go in depth and we will go through every aspect of creating the exporter. But depending on what you want to do, maybe you will not be using all the things that we will learn today. Now, without further ado, I think uh, it is time to start building something. So when I was thinking about what we should create, um, I said, well, maybe 
we can create something a little bit different. Um, you know, usually when people like export uh, stuff from the design systems, it is always stuff like CSS, um, some type script code, uh, maybe some some definitions of sorts. But um, there are also some other interesting data in design systems. Like for example, uh, many design systems are managing their versions, right? You have version design system and with each version, you are creating a change log. And I was thinking, well, maybe we can show uh, creating of the exporter that would take all of those versions, the entire change log, and basically export me sort of a documentation uh, of what was changed in every version. It is super simple, as you will see, the entire exporter will be just a few lines of code, but I think it will illustrate quite well a few topics. The first one, taking data from Supernova, and the data can be anything else, just so we are not always focused on tokens or components, we will use versions this time. But then also modifying output, so it's a little bit different than usual, exporting some markdown files instead of like CSS, stuff like this. And so I hope you will enjoy uh, creating this exporter and uh, maybe we can turn it into an official exporter uh, once we sort of sufficiently uh, expand upon its functionality because it will be very bare bones at the beginning. So let's create a new project and let's get started. All right, so I have my BS code ready. And first thing that you will want to do is to install the Supernova extension. Simply uh, search for Supernova. And uh, there is a Supernova uh, extension V2, which supports the new developer experience. So if you are on the old experience, please uh, don't forget to update the extension to its latest incarnation. Now, once you have installed the extension, you will have to log in. Um, you will uh, have this special panel available to you and you will be able to select your design system, your workspace, your version that you want to use and so on. So just select your design system or whatever you are using for the development uh, of those exporters. The extension allows you to run the exporters locally so that you don't have to use the remote pipelines for testing. It is basically the same as if you would be creating any uh, React project, any library, just uh, basically creates the, the interface for developing uh, and debugging the exporters locally with the added value that you can connect to your design system and you will have your own data to test from. So whatever uh, whatever the output is, it is actually uh, what you will get when you run the exporter in the remote pipeline. And I will show you that later in the video. Now, the extension also comes with few uh, extra interesting functionalities. And one of them is that it allows you to create exporter package immediately and you don't have to worry about you know setting up structure setting up webpack for it anything like that so the first thing that you will want to do is you will write uh, create a new exporter package in the local file system i'll confirm uh, maybe use desktop and just call it exporter uh, i'll select this folder and now we have a new instance uh, of vs code and we have the exporter created here. I would like to spend some time explaining you what is the actual structure of the exporters, um, especially of the new version of the exporters. Now, I also do want to say, because I, I don't think I've said that just yet, you can still use the old exporters. You know, we have released a new uh, experience but the old experience still works and it works all the same out of the box. So you don't have to worry that the time you have invested into your existing exporters uh, is lost and the exporters are in vain. This is not the case. Uh, in fact, we highly encourage you that you still use the old exporters, but for anything that you create a new, the new developer experience is what we are highly suggesting uh, because it is just so much better uh, than the previous one. The exporter packages, let's talk about those. So you can already immediately see some 
similarities to projects that you uh, that you already know. Like let's say you have a React application or you have npm library, your structure will very likely be the same. Now in the exporter package, there are a few files that are worth mentioning and worth going over because you will have to make some modifications to each one of them. The first one is package.json. Of course, every npm and npm-like library uh, does need to have that. And package.json is there, so it allows you to import dependencies to other libraries that you would like to use in your exporters. Now this is something new. The old exporters didn't really support dependencies, but right now this is um, sort of the default. So you can just link any kind of library that you want to. Um, the exporters, the version two of the exporters are executed uh, in uh, node-like environment. So anything that you can run in node-like environments, you will be able uh, to run uh, inside the exporter packages with some small exceptions that you can find uh, more about in the developer documentation that has to do with some security guard guardrails that we have put into the exporters um, just so your data is absolutely protected. So not everything can run, but most of your packages uh, will and certainly most of the common packages that you might need or use will run uh, properly. Now you can see that the exporter uh, starts with two dependencies, uh, the SDK, Supernova SDK, and also export helpers library. In the announcement of the new developer experience, we said that we are launching a new library and that library sort of contains all the helpers that will make your life easier when you are exporting uh, when you are creating an exporter for the first time. This is the library and we are and maintaining this library, we are constantly adding into it. It helps you to create the files of the exporters, to convert stuff, um, create variables, create properties. There is a lot that you will usually use and um, because all of the exporters have pretty much the same purpose, uh, we have been able to abstract a lot of functionality into that library. So your code will be much more compact with it than it would be without. The SDK, of course, contains the access to the data, and we will talk about this shortly. What you would do uh, when you start an exporter, you would, uh, of course, rename all of this. So uh, let's start doing that. Uh, I will add uh, Supernova IO, and my exporter name will be uh, exporter uh, versions. Very creative, I know, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, the description, we don't have to probably worry too much about it, uh, but uh, thank you uh, to Copilot and uh, Outer will be, uh, and everyone who is watching. All right, not this airport, this video. Thank you. Uh, so we will be all authoring this package um, and uh, I hope we will make something great together. Next up, the exporter JSON. Very important because um, this is what makes the exporter package the exporter package. Uh, in fact, the extension uh, will actually allow you and will show you the debugger uh, of the exporter packages because it detects the exporter JSON file. Similarly, how many extensions detect the package JSON. The exporter JSON is similar to the package, but uh, it is a description of the exporter for the Supernova store and for the workspace pipeline uh, that you for workspace pipelines that you can create. Exporter JSON contains some of the same metadata uh, that you fi will find in the package JSON. So again, you would uh, fill that in. Uh, some of them are required, but some of them are option uh, are optional. Uh, certainly, the most important is the ID, where I would like to say the ID has to be unique across the entire supernova. So I strongly encourage you that you uh, use the format that we have uh, prepared for you, which uh, usually means that you will have uh, the uniqueness uh, guaranteed. 
some other files that are interesting. Uh, well, there is a webpack, there is tsconfig. And uh, so let's start actually building the exporter. First thing I will install the libraries. Uh, so we have them and we don't have any errors. Uh, but then I will also do npm run dev, uh, which by default will start a webpack in watch mode so that uh, every change that you do automatically uh, builds a new executable uh, that is required for the, for the exporters. Because you see there is this magical argument called executable in the exporter JSON. And the way uh, the exporter works is that no matter what you have coded, it will always uh, run this file and it will execute the export function out of that file. We are using Webpack to take everything and uh, basically compile it down uh, or bundle it um, to the build.js. Uh, you can configure this however you want to, but the default configuration is sufficient. Nonetheless, build.js is another very important file and it must be present. The executable must be present because that's uh, what is at the heart of the functionality of the actual exporter. A few other things, readme will show up in the exporter store and the changelog uh, will show up in the exporter store uh, sometime later down the road. Right now we are using it uh, for the exporter packages uh, in your repositories. Now let's talk about the code of the package. As you can see, uh, we have a SRC uh, folder created that was created by default and there is an uh, index file which contains uh, some functionality uh, of the exporter. Now I will run the exporter for you. You can do this uh, by selecting run the exporter or you can profile the exporter, which does sort of time profiling for building the exporters uh, that are very simple. You don't really need this. It's only for when you uh, get into exporters that run for a long time where profiling is uh, really important. But I will run the exporter and what it does is it connects to the design system that you have selected here runs this magical function, the pulsar.export function, and then takes output of it and writes it into a destination. For VS Code, the destination is the local build folder. And in here you can see that we got colors.css created, a color primary and color secondary, uh, white and this sort of brownish. I have a design system here and as you can see, we have a primary and secondary colors here and they are the colors uh, that we have here. Now, if I would change the design system, it would take a different data from a different design system. I would run the exporter again and the output would be very different. And this is important to understand about the exporter packages, that they are sort of agnostic to your design system and to the data and you select uh, the design system depending on the outside configuration of the exporter. That selection can be done in VS Code through our extension when you are developing, but also inside the pipelines. So if you create a pipeline that is observing one design system and you use this exporter package, it will produce one set of information, uh, one set of code in this case. And then you can create another pipeline which would point to a different design system, same package, course, and it would produce a very different uh, colors.css definition. Now this is super simple exporter at the beginning. Uh, it creates you an example that sort of has everything, but also doesn't, uh, not to overwhelm you. So it only produces colors.css because mostly every design system has colors in it. But if you want much more sophisticated examples, you can go to a exporter's repository uh, that we are hosting. If you go to exporters, uh, then you will see that there are some examples of the exporters. Right now there are only two exporters, but over the next few weeks, we will be porting all of the exporters into this repository and then all the code uh, will live under this one repository and you will have all the examples of everything that we have created uh, all one under one umbrella so you can uh, learn from it and see what all is possible. Now let's get back 
and start creating the exporter. So I said that we will be creating an exporter that exports versions and exports release notes for the versions. There is a lot of code that is basically used to produce the colors.css, uh, but I say we don't really need it, so I will just delete it. Um, I will keep this for now, um, but I think this is sufficient. So let's start with basically an empty exporter, right? This is as empty as it gets. I would like to explain to you what you are actually seeing. So the new exporter packages have basically two main functions. The first function is something that is always required. This statement must be present and is heart of every exporter. You can see that uh, the signature is pulsar.export. It gives you access to a new supernova SDK, which means in this export function, you have access to every single piece of information that is in your design system in Supernova. And then you also have access to context. SDK, I think, is self-explanatory, and we will use the, uh, the SDK in a moment. But the context is very important to understand. The context basically contains information about from which the design system you are exporting any given content. Uh, more precisely, it will always contain the design system that was set as the one here uh, in the extension or in a pipeline when you are running this import, uh, exporter in Supernova platform. And because the context can be any design system, you have to build with this in mind, right? So we will be using the context uh, information, the design system ID, the workspace ID, stuff like this to precisely identify data that we would like to export. Third part of this function is an output. The function produces or needs to produce output files. And there are multiple types of output files. There are files that allow you to write textual output. There are binary files, so you can write stuff like assets. And then there are special files uh, that have very cool functionality, like for example, a copy remote URL file. Uh, which basically allows you to take a any arbitrary URL, a URL like a uh, image from some remote repository and uh, just point a URL uh, to that file and the system will automatically download the file for you and write it to the output. So if you have a, a list of external resources, for example, you can create an exporter that takes that list and then downloads all the resources and includes them in the output, uh, at the output of uh, the exporter. We will not go into that detail, but uh, we will definitely create uh, some files uh, out of the versions that we have in Supernova. So SDK allows you to access the data in Supernova. Context allows you to understand uh, where the data is coming from and then use that within the system. And on the output, you sort of are saying what the resulting uh, files should be. Let's start from the, from the very end uh, and recreate this exporter or change this exporter uh, so that it produces a release notes .md file, which is in a folder called the release notes and uh, the content is something random. So first thing uh, we have already done, which is uh, we need to run the webpack so it's constantly observing the changes that we are doing to this file. Uh, because if you don't do that, then uh, the run will always run the latest compiled version. So uh, npm run dev will run webpack in a watch mode and you don't have to worry about it. npm run build in the default configuration of the exporter will make a production build, which is what we are uh, recommending that you push into a repository when you will make it available to your workspace or to everyone in Supernova store. So let's start with modifying the output. I want to output a single file that will be the release notes that will have some sort of arbitrary content. And I'll put it into a new folder that will be automatically created for me. So uh, I'll rename 
Um, the, this is one of the helpers uh, that help you to cre create and define the output. So I will use the helper, create a text file uh, as a path. I would like to have it um, uh, a directory that will be automatically created for me. And a file name of this file uh, will be release notes. Uh, .md, thank you very much. Uh, content, just X for now. We will create content dynamically uh, once we get further in our exporter. We can rerun the exporter and now watch how the build will change. You can see that there is no longer colors.css, but instead we have a release notes.md in a folder dot uh, release rns release notes and the content is x because that's what we added here if i don't want to uh, have it in this folder i can simply put a root there and you can see that the folder will be removed but we still have the release notes right so already this is not a css exporter but rather a release notes exporter even though it's not exactly uh, exporting anything useful so let's change that I have the design system here and before this video I have modified or I've created few versions in this design system. Right? We have sort of snapshotting in Supernova uh, and I have created a new version, uh, three new versions. They are very simple uh, because they only have a few documentation pages and two tokens, so a really bare bones design system. But what is important is uh, the uh, release notes that I've Put for each. So we have initial release, we have some patch, and we have a big update here. We can use this information by pulling that info, all of this, from the newly created SDK. So we will use the SDK argument, and uh, one of the really nice things that I that I like uh, about the SDK is that everything is structured by areas. What do I what do I mean by that? So um, let's say we get uh, all the versions here and I will, it's almost, uh, almost close, but uh, as I said, the SDK is structured into areas. So we say SDK dot and now you have all the areas uh, of, of the content that you have in Supernova, right? So it's SDK dot assets and you have access to all the asset operations, creating, removing, deleting, and updating assets, you uh, say tokens, and you have access to many and many token functions that we have, right? And you could uh, just say, get token, token groups, get token teams, get tokens. You can even write tokens. So everything is accessible here. And there is also a documentation available for you when you are using, uh, when you are writing to the autocomplete now, we are not interested in tokens. You can find how tokens are used in other exporters, but here I will specifically say versions, which is another area that allows you to create snapshots uh, of the design system, but also allows you to access all the previous versions that were created in Supernova. So we'll uh, say versions. Again, you have create, you have delete, but for this uh, particular one, uh, we will say get versions. And now uh, it requires us to provide a design system ID. Now, as uh, the copilot properly identified, we can take the design system ID from the context. Uh, it's just called a little bit differently. And this call will give you a different data based on this argument, right? And this argument changes with your configuration of the pipeline or a VS Code extension. So if the pipeline configuration changes, the content changes, and this will produce a different kind of data because every single design system will have different versions. And so you can write one exporter and it will always produce something different based on the data that you give it. We have the versions, but how do we know what the version actually contains. Well, for that, uh, I strongly suggest that you go into our new developer documentation and we have written um, a explanation for every data object that there is in Supernova. Right? So we have access to workspaces, to memberships, to design systems. You can read through tokens, through different uh, token values. And as you can see, there is every single 
token type describe and how you work with them. So we can go back to the versions and in here uh, we have the list of properties, uh, also how we can import the version. Uh, and one of the properties that we are interested in is the version, which is the semantic name of the version. We also have change log, which we all need, which is equal to this particular piece on every version. And we will also be interested in is read only property because the versions in Supernova uh, are basically every snapshot that gets created is read only. Uh, but there is one spe special version, which is the draft mode, the, the latest version that was not yet stable to which all the changes are propagated that has this false. And the reason why we are interested, as you will see, is that if you would export the release notes from all the versions, there would be one version that is sort of imposter because it will not have any change log, any version uh, sort of just lives uh, there and temporarily until it gets made into a snapshot. So let's put our newly found knowledge into the code and um, I'll create a, uh, we have some helper for token from the from the existing exporter or from the exporter uh, prefab that we have uh, created in the beginning. And instead I will create a new file called helpers.ts and we will just put all the functions uh, that we need for this exporter there. So the first function I would like to uh, have is convert the versions uh, into something readable. So maybe uh, we can do export function, uh, readable version, and we will put version here. And now we can, uh, we can add a uh, type interface uh, because we have access to all the types through the supernova SDK. So uh, let's use the design system version and output will be some string, uh, which will be basically a readable description of that version. Let's try, but we really don't, don't need this. Uh, instead, what I will do, I'll return a description where uh, maybe we will put a, because we are exporting in markdown, uh, H1. Uh, we will use uh, version dot name. That's true, and then maybe we will use uh, that's that's great. Uh, we will use uh, version dot version, which will give us the one point zero point zero one point zero point one. So we know what is the semantic versioning of those versions, and then finally, I would also like to uh, give version dot change log. As you can see, change log for the version will be null if the version is in draft mode. You will see exactly what I mean by that uh, in a short moment. So we have a function, a readable version. And now uh, let's say we want to use the versions. So maybe uh, the content here, uh, we could change temporarily and do something like versions.map, um, not, not map, <laughs> that's what I will have after this video. Um, and then for each version, uh, we will use a readable version that's probably uh, that's probably what we want. And uh, yeah, we will join the content. Uh, right, I completely lost my train of thought. So I cut uh, part of the video and I fixed this code because I just couldn't find where the bracket is. Um, but that's a joy of uh, coding while recording a video. Nonetheless, uh, we now have a content for this file. So all the versions. Uh, are converted into readable and just put uh, a new line there. We can run the exporter. And we will see uh, what actually uh, what actually will be produced. And indeed, as you can see, now we have created an exporter that actually creates release notes from the list of release notes that we have inside Supernova. And if I create a new version, uh, we can just rerun this exporter and uh, it will have another version. Actually, let's do that right now. So I'll create a new version. It will be uh, uh, just for this uh, video. And uh, as a change log, we have made some changes under the hood. Our design system is evolving, uh, but uh, not everything has to be public, right? We will publish a new version. 
And what this system does, it takes a snapshot of your design system. Now there will be four design system versions instead of three uh, as we have created before. So you can see there is just for this video new version uh, and we have a change log here. Let's rerun the exporter and we have just for this video 1.2.0 and it's amazing because it is literally two three lines of code to create something like this. Right? It's so much easier than it used to be but it is also very magical because you now have access to everything that Supernova has to offer. By the way that includes writing. You can actually in the export function also run the write operations. So I will just put it out there. If you want to experiment, feel free. We are of course uh, looking at more stable solutions to provide you with uh, so import pipelines. But uh, I guess we will talk about this uh, later down the road. What more do we want? Well, first of all, uh, there is this shared draft, as I was saying, so we need to fix that. We can very easily fix that uh, by simply uh, saying fixed versions, okay? Or maybe just read only versions, so so we have it, so we have it semantically uh, correct. And we will do versions filter. And with every version, we only want versions that are read only. We will use them uh, in the content. So we now have read only versions. There will be no draft, uh, which doesn't have this particular information. Again, we will rerun the exporter. And we actually have an exporter that works reasonably well. Honestly, we can just publish this to a store. And I think it would be useful and some people would actually probably use it for some purposes. But that's not all that I want to show you because there are still some new things that you haven't seen yet. So what if we want to change our exporter so it has different behaviors depending on the needs of the user, right? Because not everyone will want to have the release notes like this. Maybe the release notes are much heftier for every release. And so it's not really fit to be included in one page. Instead, what I would like to do is to have an option to select between exporting it like this, that I have all the versions at one place and between generating every version to a separate file that is named, I don't know, like release uh, slash or something uh, and the semantic version number of that release dot empty. And I think we can do that. Um, and I think we should because uh, there are probably design systems that would heavily benefit from this. But how do we do this? Because previously the exporters were not really configurable, right? It was just like, this is your exporter and uh, that's what it does. Well, with the new developer experience, we now have an option to define configuration that is changeable by the consumers of the exporters. You can find that I have a special files that are generated for me, config.json, config.local.json, and also config.ts. So let's go through all of them and uh, explain what they actually are. The first thing uh, is the config.json. The config.json declares all configuration properties that your exporters can help and can expose, uh, can have and can expose to your users so they can configure the behavior of the pipeline through those properties. As you can see at the beginning, uh, it generated me one property called generate disclaimer uh, in the previous incarnation of this exporter that was the color CSS. Uh, if you would enable this, it would generate a sm small snippet at the top of each file or the colors.css that basically says this file is generated by Supernova, don't modify manually, right? And you could change this so it generates for you or doesn't depending on your preference as a developer or maybe your preference um, in regards to the co code base and standards that you are using there. For this particular exporter, we don't really want to generate the disclaimer. Instead, we would like to have a configuration option that allows us to split the files. So 
uh, maybe we call it um, the naming is the worst part about coding, right? Everyone knows that. So maybe we will call it uh, like separate, uh, separate files, and uh, each version separated to its own file will be a title. It's not perfect, but uh, it can be that. It can be that, and uh, yeah, we can just uh, copilot uh, fill it in make sure it's valid JSON. And now we have a configuration that we will be able to use that says, okay, I want to use separate files, yes or no. Uh, if this option uh, is yes, we will generate uh, each file per version, uh, file per version. If this is false, we will generate what we have now, all the release nodes into one file. You could continue and you can have unlimited number of configuration options. Uh, one thing that is important, this is boolean uh, type of option but there are many more um, specifically i think you can use booleans uh, strings numbers objects arrays and enums um, so you can build very sophisticated configurations if you want a heavy example of this go into the new css exporter which completely uh, takes this to extreme and it allows you to basically just change the output uh, to your liking uh, really, really heavily. Another thing uh, that is important, you as a developer, you say uh, what is the default value, but the users can say, I don't like this default value. I would like to have a different behavior. For this reason, there is a new file that you can create, which is the config.local.json. This is optional. You don't have to uh, provide this file. And you as a creator of those exporter packages, you will usually not because the default values should be what the exporter ships with. But if a user uh, wants to do a modification to the exporter, they do now don't have to um, go into the code and change the behavior. They can just create this local JSON file and provide overrides for the other default values there. So if in my exporter, I would like to have this property true. I can just go to config.local.json, uh, use this key, separate files, and I will say, I do want separate files, right? Uh, this takes precedence over your default values. So the user, when they run the exporter, they will actually have uh, a true value in, uh, in, the, in, this, in this key, in this property that you have created. The third part of this is uh, the config.ts file. Now this is only a type interface. So pools are, so the exporter package actually knows that such option exists, right? Because it is TypeScript first, we need to tell it that this is uh, something that is available to it. So again, I will take the key and I will say, I have a new property, separate files, and uh, we don't have to worry about the, description now, but I think it's a, it's a good custom to provide a comment uh, for each of those configuration options. Ideally, you copy it uh, from the description. So even the developers that will just look in this interface immediately know what each property means. Now, how do you use such configuration? Well, there is another magical file, uh, magical function uh, of the Pulsar, of the export engine that runs the exporter, called export config. This is a function that takes um, your TypeScript interface, your config interface, uh, as a generic argument. And what you will get is basically the resolved configuration taken from the default values with applied overrides from the users. For now, the overrides can only do be done locally, which is a, of course, big limitation, but very soon we will announce a way how you can provide such configuration when you are creating the pipelines. So with each pipeline, you will be able to basically provide a JSON file and then eventually also an interface that makes it easy for the developers to choose uh, those options. And so each pipeline will be capable of overriding the default behaviors. This is where we are going. And this is also why we are still labeling the experience, the new developer experience beta, because there are still some quirks that we need to figure out. 
but overall this is coming uh, shortly and uh, it gives you a lot of options because you can now create a massive exporters that have vast array of functionality but people will not need to fork the exporters anymore to make the changes rather the changes will be done through the configuration and only in very rare cases you will be required to make the fork you know if you just don't find the option that uh, suits your needs and all the exporters that we will be creating as supernova will have very extensive options uh, so we ideally avoid the forking of the exporters going forward as much as possible so let's put this into a test let's actually create this behavior right so it, so it behaves a little bit differently now this will not be the most optimal code because here i am just cooking out of water um, i am i've created this option uh, just because i think it would be cool to have it uh, so let's use the export configuration uh, we still need those for both cases but uh, what we will do we'll say if export configuration uh, has a separate files uh, then we will return one set of files and uh, we will uh, return another set of files if uh, if this is not the case so we already have the separate files branch right and in here we can just use what we had but of course we are missing the other piece uh, maybe let's not worry about the content just yet um, and so i will just copy this behavior and in here uh, for the separate files i will say this should go to separate files just to, to show you how the configuration works right so uh, in this mode it is sort of work in progress or actually we can say work in progress this is wrong and uh, we can say work in progress and uh, in the other mode we have what we have created so it will actually produce uh, the release notes so let's enable the separate uh, the separate files in the config this is default but i am overriding it to true so locally i should have uh, separate files true which will mean it will return the work in progress and indeed you can see that i have work in progress output with work in progress content if i go to local i say i don't want separate files well then i can rerun this again and now i have release notes with the release notes right i think this is very understandable and you can imagine how very quickly you can add so many options what I would recommend at the beginning is that you don't worry about the options too much. You build the core functionality of the exporters and then you think as a user what would make sense to sort of parameterize. So if you are exporting variables, maybe you want to uh, provide an option for users to change uh, the, the, um, the structure of the variables or the naming, uh, maybe from snake case to camel case, stuff like this. Uh, that's something that you would parameterize but really only do that once you are done with the basic functionality otherwise you will probably uh, be redoing a lot of stuff unnecessarily all right now we need to actually finish the functionality and the reason why i'm doing this is i want to show you that you know now we are returning one file right but we actually can return multiple files at the same time. And so uh, we will not need this anymore. And instead, what we will, we will do is for each read-only version, uh, we will return a new file. That's true. Uh, we will add it to a root directory or whatever folder you want. And then we will name it. Uh, that's actually pretty good uh, but let's maybe just use the v.version.md I think that's that's completely okay uh, the only thing that I would like to do here is to replace uh, the dots that we will have with uh, hashes with slashes something like that um, and then uh, we will get a proper file name uh, without the dots. The content will be a readable version uh, function, which converts it into uh, 
well, the readable content that we are using. So now we can run the exporter, it sounds great. And we have the release notes. So we are using this branch. We go to local, we say separate the files. This is true. And uh, now when we go to here, you can see that we have an exporter that is starting to produce a dyna dynamic number of files depending on what you have in your design system. And if we would create such exporter, uh, if we would create a new version and use this exporter, then uh, it would just grow, the list would grow. Additionally, what I would like to do is to return a dynamic file and a static file uh, together. So again, uh, I could probably do something like uh, dynamic content, and this would be uh, those files that we have created. And then I will do static content, and this would be uh, an index file. What I would like to do is basically create a sort of crossroads for all the versions where we have just a list of versions and it would point to each of the versions here. So just give me a second, I will code it uh, so we are not wasting time and then uh, we will be back. All right, so I have uh, now coded the rest of the exporter. So the changes that I did, I have uh, now finished this branch. Uh, as you can see, there is a dynamic content which uh, maps all the versions and creates a file out of each one of them. It creates um, this file name structure, as you can see. But I also created a static content and a static content uh, basically declares uh, index.md file. And I've created a function that takes every version and uh, sort of turns it into a readable link for each version. Uh, when we go to that branch, we can now run uh, the exporter and it will include a new file called index.md and um, I can open a preview and you can see that we now have a release notes uh, with every file separated into uh, every version separated into each uh, file and we also have uh, the detail for each version. Of course, this is probably not as useful as having it in one page only for specific design systems, but it shows you how you can play and uh, play around and how you can change the output to your liking. All right, I think this exporter is phenomenal now, right? Uh, we have built it in a few minutes and uh, I think we are now ready to publish this exporter and actually use it uh, in our design system pipeline. So when we have already tested the exporter, what has to happen? The first thing that needs to happen is you need to package the exporter. So you need to create a repository and push that exporter and with all its code built into that repository because Supernova can only install exporters when they are hosted in the repositories. If you intend to host the exporter or if you intend to publish the exporter to a broader community, then please go to uh, the exporters repository, fork the entire uh, repository, and then create a new folder here in the exporters. Name it appropriately and create a pull request against the repository. We will then review the exporter. We will help you to sort of finalize it Maybe we will create a fancy icon for your exporter. And then we will, upon sort of validation that it makes sense to have that exporter available to everyone, publish it to a broader audience. If you want the exporter to be private, so you are not publishing it to everyone, then you don't have to do that step. In that case, create your own repository and uh, I will show you how you install the exporter from the repository. Now in the meantime, I've created a new home for the exporter. Every exporter needs to have a home. So this one has a exporter versions a repository inside Supernova. And uh, once you did all the configuration that is needed, like filling out the package JSON, filling the export exporter.json config and stuff like this, you can simply take the URL and go to Supernova. In the code integration and in the store, 
you will have a new option to create the exporter. So just copy paste the exporter URL and uh, your exporter will be available here as every other exporter that we have here. I cannot show you that right now because it is actually six hours from the release and on the production realm, we cannot install this type of the exporters just yet. So you have to believe me, but by the time you see this video, it will already work. Um, however, if you have installed this exporter, then it will show up in the list of your exporters. And you can see that I have many of the exporters here and you will be able to use it in the hooks, in the, in the pipelines, in the delivery, the automated delivery of the code of Supernova. So what you would do as with every other exporter, you would create a new hook, new pipeline, as we call it, and you will create uh, a version delivery. And then you will select an event that you want to be observing. For this particular exporter that we have created, only version released makes sense, really, which basically runs the exporter every time a version is released. This is perfect for this exporter because we are ultimately interested in the version content but you can also observe some other events like every time something changes in, uh, in the design system or every time uh, an upstream data will change, which is very nice when importing from Figma, from stuff like Storybook and so on. You would select the exporter package and then optionally, you can also select a brand, but our exporter doesn't have a brand or theme configuration. This is probably something that I can explain still. So in the exporter JSON, there are two magical properties, uses brands and uses themes. If you enable the brands functionality, then inside your context, you will have this brand ID available. User is required to provide a brand from which uh, the exporter exports. Now this is important because some of the exporters um, do support brands like the CSS exporter that we have introduced. And this allows you to create a multi-branded design systems that export a different kind of data from different brands declared in Supernova. The other property uses themes is uh, similar, but it specifically talks about themes for tokens. So if you enable the multi theme functionality, then you will be able to get this property in the context theme ID. And again, you are able to apply themes on top of uh, certain data. One of the use cases for something like this would be if you uh, want to get the data uh, from the uh, about the tokens, then there is a lot of utilities that we uh, have for you for working with tokens. And particularly for the teams, uh, I believe if you, uh, if you say apply teams, then there is a utility that basically allows you to get a resolved team out of the selection of teams that user have provided, right? So, uh, you get all the teams, uh, all the tokens, uh, get tokens. This would give you, uh, basically the tokens that you have inside the design system. And then you can say, okay, uh, I don't want the, just the base tokens. I want to uh, compute a token set that I get by applying themes and you give it the themes that you have patched and you also get the themes that you want to apply that again, you can get from the SDK, let's saying SDK tokens dot themes, right? And you get all the token themes that are available there inside Supernova. And again, they are same object, they have the documentation and uh, you can read about this uh, inside the documentation that we have written as well. Overall, this is super uh, powerful system that allows you to mix and match exactly how you want it. And uh, we are only at the very beginning. We have built this as a foundation for years to come and there is a lot uh, that is coming your way. So I cannot, uh, I cannot wait to show you all of this because we have been very busy this year. Um, when you are finished with the hook, you just say, okay, next. Uh, and now you select where you want to push the data. In this case, I would like to open a pull request against a specific account, specific repository, but I can also say maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, deliver a webhook or a push to Azure or 
store the code in supernova and I will do something with this manually. When you create uh, the hook, it will basically create an automatic observer that is watching your data constantly. And when you change something in your design system, it will uh, trigger the exporter that you have created and it will uh, deliver the code that the exporter is supposed to create. One last thing before we wrap up, let's say you want to make a change into the exporter. How do you propagate the updates to the upstream, to the cloud, so that either your design system or everyone who is using it in terms of public exporters is having that update as well? Well, what you have to do are two things. The first one, the exporters are versioned, so you need to bump a version here in the exporter JSON to something that corresponds with your change. So patch, if it's small, uh, you know the drill. Then you commit this uh, exporter JSON with the bump version and also all of your changes to the repository. Once you have done this, you can just go to a detail of the exporter and to the settings of the exporter. And here you can see if you are owner of the exporter that you can pull uh, from the latest version. We have not done any changes, so uh, this will say it's up to date. But if you have bumped the version and there are some changes, it will tell you now everything is updated. From that point forward, everyone who is using your exporter will automatically get this update and every build will run on that new version. This makes it very easy to develop the exporters and we actually have a lot in store to make this experience better as well. So stay tuned for that. I do think I've talked for a long time. I hope it was useful for you. We went in depth with uh, some of the concepts, but if you really mean business with writing the exporters, I do think this will give you enough information to get started. If you have some questions around um, building the exporters around contributing to Supernova or just generally you want to chat with our team, please join us uh, at the community.supernova.io where we are always there and uh, we can always answer your questions or open a um, issue in any of the repositories that uh, we have released uh, just now. And with that, I hope this was useful for you. Uh, I hope uh, I didn't bore you for <laughs> almost an hour, I think. Um, and if you want to see more of those videos, please let me know. Uh, more than happy to do that or anyone on the team. Uh, we always like to show you what is possible with Supernova. Have a great day. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.